All right. So one of the new things we talked about is, um, you know, we talked a lot about in the last module, the limit definition of derivative. Um, but it's obviously very cumbersome, very time consuming to use. So I'd like to use shortcuts if we can. So one of the things we'd like, we, we've talked about is using constant multiples. Um, and basically some of the, some of the ways you can talk about the derivatives of these combined functions. So we'll get to that. First thing we're asked for is what H of two is. Um, so we are told that H is defined in, in this way, um, involving F and G. But H of two is gonna be equal to three times F of two minus four times G of two. So now we just need to find out what those things are. What is F of two? We are told above that is five. And what is G of two? We are told that is negative three. So h of 2 is equal to 15 minus negative 12, so 27. Good. Now, before we find h prime of 2, we should talk about, um, let's, let's find a derivative of h. So what is h prime of x? So one thing we know here is that when we take a derivative of a function, um, so the sum and difference rule allows us to basically take these things term by term. So I don't have to look at three times f of x and four times g of x. I don't have to look at that all at once. Um, I can look at it one at a time. So what's the derivative of three times f of x? Um, that's equal to three times the derivative of f. And likewise, for four g of x, the derivative of that is four times g prime of x. So that's in general what h prime is. So what is h prime of 2? h prime of 2 is equal to 3 times f prime of 2 minus 4 times g prime of 2. And now we can go back to the information we were given above. What is f prime of 2? That is negative 1 half. And what is g prime of 2? That is 2. So negative 3 halves minus 8. It'll be negative nine and a half or negative 19 over two. All right, so that's part A. Let's move on to part B. We want to find an equation for the tangent line um, to the graph of y equals h of x to the point to h of two. So a couple of ways we can go about this. I'll go ahead and do it as two ways. So I've seen a lot of you use two different forms of the equation of a straight line. So one is our y equals mx plus b, you know, our slope intercept form. The other one I see a lot of is a point slope form. So y minus y1 equals the slope times the quantity x minus x1. So what are an x and y point that we know? So our x value is two. The value of y that goes with it is whatever h of 2 is, which we just found was 27. Um, what else do we need to know? We need to know what the slope is. So what is it that tells us the slope? Well, if y is equal to h of 2, um, we've talked a lot about what the derivative of a function tells you. One of those things is the slope of the curve or the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. That slope is going to come from what the value of the derivative was at x equals 2, and that was negative 19 over 2. Um, so if we use point slope form here, we have the, all the information we need. So y minus y1, so y minus 27 equals m, negative 19 over 2, times x minus x1, so x minus 2. So if you prefer point slope form, here's a equation you can use if we do a uh, slope intercept form um, with plugging the things we know so far. Y and X are general. So I'm gonna leave those general for now, but the slope is the same. Um, we know that's negative 19 over two times X plus B. So in order to finish this equation, we need to solve for B. So how can we solve for B? Well, we know a corresponding point or we know a corresponding X and Y value. We know a point on this function. We know that the, that point is 227. So I'll plug in 27 for y, 2 for x. What do I get here? 27 equals negative 19 plus b. 
So B equals 27 plus 19, which is 46. So finally, Y equals negative 19 over 2X plus 46. So even though these equations uh, look very different, they are equivalent to each other. Moving on to part C. So now we're given a new function, this new function P. Um, and we are asked, is this function increasing, decreasing, or neither at A equals 2? So what is it that tells us if a function is increasing or decreasing? So that information is going to come directly from the derivative. So if the derivative tells us the instantaneous rate of change of a function, um, then we can use it to tell if we're increasing or decreasing. So what are our criteria going to be here? So if it's increasing, we're going to get what? We're going to get that P prime of 2 is a positive number. If it's decreasing, we're going to get that P prime of 2 is a negative number. If it's doing neither, we're going to get P prime of 2 is equal to 0. So in all these cases, I'm assuming that this function will be differentiable um, at uh, at x equals 2. Uh, we might find out that's not the case, but let's let's keep looking. So if p of x is defined in this way, then what is p prime of x? Um, for the same reason that, reason that we gave for, for a and b, um, p prime of x is equal to negative 2 times f prime of x plus 1 half times g prime of x. And we are being asked to evaluate that where x equals 2. So p, p prime of 2 is equal to negative 2 times f prime of 2 plus 1 half times d prime of 2. So now let's plug in some of the details we know. What is f prime of 2? That is negative 1 half plus 1 half g prime of 2. What is g prime of 2? That is 2. So we get... 1 plus 1, that equals 2. So we have the derivative. Uh, what does it tell us? Well, 2 is greater than 0. Therefore, P is increasing at x equals 2. All right, moving on to part D. Uh, estimate the value of P of 2.03 by using the local linearization of P at the point 2 and P2. Okay, so we don't have enough information about P to get the exact value of P of 2.03, but here's what we do know. We know that P of 2, actually I don't think we did find P of 2, but we knew though that P prime of 2 is equal to, uh, what do we say? Two. So in a small area, it's in an area around x equals two. I know that my function is increasing at this rate of two, this instantaneous rate of two. So in order for us to figure out what this approximate y value that goes with x equals two point zero three, we need to figure out what p of two is. So I'm gonna go ahead and back and do my work on this slide. If I want to find P of 2, I can plug in some values here. So negative 2 times F of 2 plus 1 half times G of 2. What is F of 2? That is 5. And G of 2 is negative 3. So all told, I get negative 10 minus 3 halves. So negative 20 over 2 minus 3 over 2, that is negative 23 over 2. Um, since we're dealing with decimals, decimals, I'll go ahead and express it in that way too. Negative 11.5. So I have P of 2 equals negative 11.5. Okay, so how do these two pieces of information tell me what's going to happen or what my approximate value of P of 2.03 is? So a couple ways, to, or several ways to think about this. One way I'll bring this up is this. What does the derivative tell us? It tell us it tells us the instantaneous rate of change of this function at this point. Or, you know, even though I'm not necessarily going to draw a graph here, it's 
going to give us the um, the slope of the tangent line at that point. Um, so when we talk about slope, what do we mean? We mean a change in y over a change in x. And in this case, we know that change in y over change in x, that ratio is two um, in you know neighborhoods very close to this x equals two. So I have D, uh, delta y over delta x is equal to two. But what is my change in x gonna be? So I found this derivative around x equals two. How far am I straying from two? Well, if I'm going from two 2.03, that's a change in x of 0 0.03 units. So now I can use that. So delta y over 0 0.03 equals 2. What does that mean that delta y is equal to? Delta y is equal to 0 0.06. So my change in y is 0 0.06. So what does that mean for my new x value? Well, my initial y value was negative 11.5. So when x is equal to 2, p of 2 is a negative 11.5. So if I add 0 0.06 to that, my change in y, I should get what? Negative 11.44. All right, that's all for question 10.